Hello, everybody. My name is Kenny Day Luker, and my project presentation title is Using Micrococcus lactatus, Lactococcus lactis, and Bacillus bacteria in the breaking down of microplastics. So, as an introduction for this, microplastics are essentially uh, very tiny pieces of plastic. And I think there are around 24.4 trillion pieces found within uh, our waters, and particularly the uh, oceans. And some of the problems that they can pose are uh, certain chemicals, toxins, and metals that can be dangerous in the human body. And some examples of how they can be dangerous is, well, since they are so small, they can actually get stuck in your gut and intestinal tract or digestive system and cause a blockage, meaning that you won't really have the feeling of being hungry so essentially uh, lesser intelligent animals will starve themselves to death. And some chemicals or toxins or metals, to be exact, uh, well, they can cause flu-like symptoms like diarrhea and vomiting and can sometimes lead to death. And the third uh, biggest problem with microplastics is, well, a lot of our food supply actually comes from the waters, specifically the ocean. So if most of our food comes from the ocean and if our food supply is contaminated, then that will cause a catastrophic event, causing millions and not billions of people to get sick and potentially die from contaminated food. And since microplastics are so small, it's incredibly difficult to pick out and every piece of microplastic found within uh, meat. And so, I'm sorry. Uh, well, we've been a little, <laughs> a little lazy with uh, throwing things away. And I thought that I could possibly fix that with using uh, bacteria. And at the beginning of my project, I wanted to use certain enzymes like metase and peptase that they proved to be a little too costly. So I had to resort to bacteria. And it had got me to think, what if these bacteria are better, or, well, if they could do as well, if not better, than methase of peptase, and if they cost, and if they're cost efficient, then they could even rival the methase of peptase enzymes. And some background on enzymes right here. So hydrolase and catalytic reactions. Hydrolases are a class of enzymes that are able to cause degradation of plastic polymers, and they essentially work in, well, best work in water or near water. And catalysis is essentially the process of increasing the rate of chemical reaction by adding a substance known as a catalyst. The catalysts are consumed in a chemical reaction and they connect repeatedly. So the function of a catalyst is pathway. Catalysts have one job to increase activation energy, which is essentially uh, the amount of energy caused to, uh, and the amount of energy put into a reaction. The catalyst works by providing an alternative pathway. So enzymes are catalysts. All enzymes are catalysts, but not all catalysts are enzymes. And the three most common types of catalysts are acid-based, enzymes and heterogeneous catalysts. And the problem is that there are, are there any alternative ways of removing our microplastics from our waters? And so the purpose of the project is to find more uh, cost efficient or an alternative to using methase and peptase enzymes, since the bacteria that I have cost $12 per vial while one vial of the enzymes had cost nearly 7,000. So my hypothesis is, if Lactococcus lactis, Bacillus series, Micrococcus lactis are submerged in and plastic, microplastic polluted waters of various temperatures brought upon them, the amount of microplastic within the water will decrease in varying amounts. So the variables of the experiment some independent variables are, say, the bacteria and temperature introduced to the water. The dependent variable, 
variable will be the concentration of microplastics after the introduction of cyclobacteria. And some control variables are essentially every other test condition, say the amount of water over time used. So some applications could be, excuse me, an alternative to using, uh, well, enzymes to, to solve our microplastic problem it is more cost effective and allows for uh, further experimentations with a bacterium that scientists can use for the future. So the procedure of experiment had start off with the gathering stream water from our new local school, putting in three beakers, so nine beakers each, uh, testing to see, well not necessarily testing, but analyzing each jar of water to see how many microplastics are in there by putting 15 drops of water onto the a glass sheet used and then put it under a microscope and then analyze it. And after all that data has been gathered, introduce the bacteria and temperature to each one and then wait a month and then repeat the process of uh, analyzing it again. So materials, for example, were the microscope, uh, the jars, the glass sheets, excuse me, the local stream water, vessel series, Micrococcus mutatus, and Lactococcus lactis. And what happened for my experiment was that Lactococcus lactis did not really change in the colder temperatures, but as soon as it got warmer, then, well, it started to yield better results. That's the same for uh, Bacillus cereus, with it being uh, much better, or yielding better results than Lactococcus lactis. And for the uh, one that yielded the best results would be Micrococcus mutatus. Again, as soon as it got warmer, the bacteria or the enzymes that they created were able to do their job better, they weren't able to desaturate, meaning that they could continue during their process. And here's some of the references that I had right here, primarily just researching uh, water, microplastics, and the bacteria used for this experimentation. And some future research, it may not say on here, but uh, there are some funguses that can be used in landfills to essentially uh, decrease the amount of plastic or uh, trash there. So that could be used for our microplastic problem to see if fungus could be used. And there are some parasites like the waxworm that not necessarily rely on plastic for their diet, but they certainly can eat microplastic. And some other bacteria can be used like E. coli and certain pressures can be put upon each bacteria, parasite, and fungi that could yield varying results. And some acknowledgments that I may have are for Dr. Powell for providing me with the biologic information and Ms. Steele for providing any funds or help during the project. So, excuse me, in conclusion, based on my results, my hypothesis was supported the bacteria are more effective at the higher temperatures that were brought upon them, and the temperatures were not to the point of killing them or desaturating them. Without the test specimens, Micrococcus mutatus was the best one, followed by Bacillus cereus, and then lastly, Lactococcus lactis. Excuse me. Overall, the bacteria have proven themselves to have some sort of chance of being an alternative to enzymes, although they might take a lot longer to uh, biodegrade those microplastics, they certainly are a lot cheaper than using enzymes or the methods that they face. Thank you, and that should be my presentation.